<laughs> um, I would like you to lie on your side. Whichever side's more comfortable for you to lie on. So we're, we're, we're putting some criteria here. So we reduce the number of choices. I've asked her to lie on her more comfortable side. Then I'm going to check what she needs. The height of the head. Um, and... So is it, are you seeing more with that little process that you did of what's happening in the movement? You start, do you feel like you can see, lift your head again for me, a little more of the movement? You're too busy looking at Anna. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we would like the line of her spine to be more or less as parallel to the floor. I mean, it's not strictly parallel, but th th there's no high bits or low bits because if her head is a lot lower, the weight of her head is going to pull on her torso and shoulders. It's going to influence what she feels and what happens through her torso. So first of all, I'm going to ask Anna to do the movement of lifting her foot away from the other one. Uh huh, and put it back down. And now lift your knee. Uh huh, and come back. So, which direction do you think it's easier for her to roll in? Okay, G got 50 50 chance. Anna, which is easier for you? Yeah, so I would have said back. The reason why I chose back is that more of her is involved in it. And it, it is actually, for most people, easier. No, I won't say that. No. Okay, so that's just a, something that we can note. Now I'm going to put my hands on her and feel the movement here. Can you lift your knee? So I'm just going for a ride. So this is what you're going to be doing with your partner in a moment, okay? Going for a ride. And I'm, I'm noticing myself, my breathing, and the quality of my contact with her. Now, if she was to go any further, can you see how I would be stuck? Yeah. My wrists are going to start interfering with her movement. So either I... If the person's moving in a small range, it's fine. But if she was moving in a larger range, I'd need to reorganize. But it's great. Okay, now I'm going to put my hands here and feel what's happening. Mm -hmm. And back. And I'm trying to capture an image of how she is using herself. Could you lift your foot? can be a visual image, but I'm also trying to scoop up some kinesthetic details. So what I feel when she roll, when she lifts her foot, she's rolling on the ground forwards. Her ribs and her pelvis are coming a little bit together. So I'll give you the details. That I feel her ribs moving a little ahead of her pelvis. Oh, some of you have seen that. Very good. Okay. You hear... <laughs> Okay, can you lift your knee and come backwards? When she comes backwards, her pelvis starts first, her ribs move. There is a little bit of lengthening, but there's a lagging here in terms of there's a, the movement stops a little. She's moving in her thorax, moving in her pelvis, but I don't feel that chain of motion going through the skeleton here. So there, they're starting to separate. So I'm just feeling, what does she do? So that's something I can feel. You might feel a direction or you might notice the shape. Whatever you notice with your partner is what you notice. Now I'm going to put my hands on her shoulder. Could you do the... And again, my hands are stopping her now. 
It's not that we want a big movement, but mm -hmm, here maybe. I'm helping her sense herself. It's as if my hands are saying without telling her, did you know you move here? Did you know, can you feel this sense yourself here? Mm -hmm. Go the other way. Take your, lift your foot. Okay. Now, if you need to, well, no, sorry. But rewind. So now you're going to make yourself comfortable. You can use the tables if you want. You're going to explore the directions of movement that your partner just moved in. If you get lost, you can ask them to do it again. You're not going to make them move anywhere, but you're going to begin to feel what's the quality of their movement like? Is, does it feel light? And how far through them do you sense it traveling? So I'm going to start with her foot. And here, when I make contact, I pause. Where's Raymond? There. When I make contact, I pause. I listen. Just say, oh. There's you. That's your foot. I sense myself and I'm sensing her. Then my intention is going to be to lift her foot. I don't need her to help me, but maybe, I can, maybe it's a big kind of a reorganization to try and lift it. So if I, it doesn't feel like it's really easy because her feet are beautifully in contact. Maybe I could just I'll lift the heel first. Okay, and she wants to help. It's okay. So we just notice that. I usually say to my clients, oh, will you be on my committee? Because <laughs> there, I, in my experience, there's a strong correlation between wanting people who anticipate and their, their willingness to do. <laughs> so you want helpers on your committee if they're going to do it well. She's going to do it well. So I can, there's different strategies I can try because we all want to help. We all want to feel what's going to happen, but I've made it smaller. I sense my breathing and now she's not helping at all. I'm still just lifting the heel. And we did that rocking movement. It's more like that. So if I just aim to lift the heel and forget about the rest of the foot, it's going to feel like I'm asking her, so, her to do something that's not possible. So I'm, I'm actually stabilizing the front of her foot and lifting the heel. And at the same time, I'm sensing with my other hand what's happening there. Now I'm going to see, can we go in the other direction? Can I lift her foot? Oh, yes. Okay. So now I'm lifting the front of her foot, not the back of the foot. Now, the way I'm lifting it, it isn't the best way yet that I would like. I would like to be in here. But now I can do that easily. I can slide my hand in. So now I'm going to lift her toe end. And how far through her skeleton do I sense that traveling? Now, I could do it like this. So Anna, could you please pay attention to the difference between this? That looks okay, doesn't it? Oh, <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> what? Do that, that way again? Is, so I'm gonna do that way. Versus this. More movement the second way. And she feels lighter. It feels easier to me. Can you see the difference in how I'm doing it? I've, you can see the difference between my, in the distance between my nose. But the real difference is it's not my arms doing the work. It's my pelvis. It's my whole self. Okay? That's the difference. So, which is why it's so important when you begin touching people that you make sure you're comfortable and that your pelvis is free to move. So now, 
I'm sliding my hand under both parts and I'm going to see, can I lift her lower leg? Uh -huh. I'm going to try different ways because I wasn't sure whether that was me or that was her. So you see, I don't just keep doing it the way I was, just do it the way I do it first, that comes to me first. Sorry, Julie. So here I know I can move my pelvis. Here I know. And it feels light. So this is just a little reassurance. It's amazing. Mm. So it's my self-organization. It's using my pelvis to support the action of my arms and my connection with her, which is what, you, what you've been doing the last two segments also. Okay. It's, and it's most important. See, now I feel she could go even higher. But I'm not making her go higher. I'm looking for what's the range that feels really light and easy. And I'm only going to stay in that range. No effort. Okay, now what about, could I organize myself to lift her knee? Let's see. So how do I get my hands between her knees? Anna, could you lift your leg for me just a little bit? Easiest way. <laughs> okay, to begin with, it's the easiest way. Now, I'm remembering how she moved the pathway of her knee. And I'm just going to find a way to begin to do that. And she feels, she can feel it, she can sense it. So I'm going to change my way of doing and see. So now I'm really feeling the ground underneath myself, the movement of my pelvis in space, and the ground underneath her. So I'm thinking not just of the top side of her pelvis, I'm thinking of the bottom side of her pelvis. Okay, that's enough. It's just you exploring something. Then we had rolling of the pelvis. So I'll show you on the skeleton in a minute. But there is a, just put your hands on your own pelvis. Have you done anything where you've used the, pel the handle on the pelvis? You followed movement. You followed the pelvic clock, yes? So then you put your hands on the, that bony prominence in the pelvis, which we nicknamed the ASIS. So that's where my hand is. But it, bone, we want to contour our hands so it doesn't feel like I'm picking up a coat hanger kind of feeling. It's a real connection. So I think, could you roll your pelvis? I've forgotten how you move, Anna. Could you roll your, lift your knee again? And... Okay, that's enough, and go back. So I'm going to say, did you know, I'm going to see, find out, this direction, you can move in this direction. She's helping me a little bit again, that's fine. So maybe I can find a better contact. So when someone assists you, it could be that they don't know that they're helping, or it could be that the you, way you're contacting them isn't comfortable. There. So that's my pelvis. If you look at my pelvis, it's my pelvis that's creating the movement. So my arms aren't bending and shortening, but we're main, you know, we did this, keeping the arms along. Well, that's what we're looking for here, that my arms are directly connected to my pelvis. Maybe I want to try a different handle. You know, but this beautiful great trichanter here that we were playing with. I'm going to go from here. Okay. So I could explore both directions. If I get lost, ask her to do it again. Not trying to make anything happen, but to see if I can use myself 
to create a little movement in either of the directions, rolling forwards or backwards, that feels very easy and light. When someone helps, one thing you can do is go slower. So now I'm thinking of rolling a thorax forwards and backwards. Now if I feel her getting ahead, I'm just going to pause, listen to her breathing for a moment. Think about myself again. Think about what's happening on the underneath side. So as soon as our attention gets localized or um, unidimensional, it changes what the, how the person senses themselves through your hands, through your connection. So here, again, my pelvis. Keeping my hands as soft as I can. Then we could do the same thing here. So I'm just looking in to move in the range, to explore that range of movement that feels light and easy. So I'm going to come back and explore the movement again of alternating heel, front of the foot. Then maybe, oh, we can do it this way now. Maybe I'll go back and try this way. Oh, sorry. It's not what you want to do. You don't want to bump the person <laughs> with your knees. She could go further. She could have gone further than lift your knee for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's basically, basically what you're going to do. Do you roll over on your back and feel the difference between your two sides for a moment? Any questions? I've given you a lot in terms of what to think about, but that's because I think you can. Did someone have a question? I thought, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Alison, I zoned out there. That's all right. um, I remember in our first segment, um, Susan, I think we had our hands on one another, and Susan uh, made the point about uh, sometimes two hands can ca cause, con does anybody else remember that? Cause, cause confusion. confusion? Yeah. So I just wondered if you, and you mm -hmm. were obviously using, I think you both needed to use mm -hmm. them. So could you just talk for a minute about, about the relationship between I think them? If, if your hands are doing different things and you, or you don't know what your hands are doing, it's very easy to create confusion. But remember Narayan's steering wheel? So the proper way to use a steering wheel that I was taught was that you feed through, that one hand has to know where the other hand is, that they're both going in the same direction. So if you're able to sense through both hands and know what the other hand is doing so that they relate and they're both carrying out the same intention, then confusion is less likely. But to begin with, often we, we tend to press a little bit harder with one hand or touch with different parts of our hands. Um, it is also a strategy that you can use later on 
to quieten someone's nervous system, to confuse it so that they can't assist you. Mm -hmm. But to begin with, it's a paradox. It's, Moshe talked all the time about the principle of having no principles. Did you want to say something, Jenny? I think um, Susan's point was about congruence. Ah, yeah. Are Thank your you. hands giving the same, same message? Same message. Great. And often we can kind of leave a hand resting somewhere while we're busy doing something else <laughs> and there is no congruence. Yes. But if we're saying, can you sense the relationship between my hands, um, that's... And often, yeah, and often two hands give a sense of volume. One hand gives a surface. Not necessarily, but if I'm touching both sides, it's a different sense you have of your foot or if I'm touching the back and the front. So you're going to learn to use your hands in many different ways. So you can, if you feel don't feel comfortable using two hands, ask your partner, how is it? Whatever. Okay. Yes, Mia. I know sometimes when I'm, I'm the person holding the other person, I feel like I'm overusing my pelvis. So what could I do? Overusing your pelvis. It feels like I'm effing. So how about you call somebody over to begin with? As soon as you feel like you're uncomfortable, call Jenny or I over. And, and that's true of anyone. You know, I mean, there's two of us, but um, <laughs> we're here to help. If you're struggling with something and you can't find your own way to make it a little easier, ask us because it might be something particularly nuanced to your partner or you. That would be really helpful for you to hear. Okay. So you're going to have 20 minutes. Each. Each. Mm -hmm. Go for a ride. Thank you, Jenny. Go for a ride first. Watch your partner. Go for a ride. And then you're going to explore. Okay?